Hello and welcome to my ever webinar review where what I'm going to be doing is kind of walking you the process of how they work, giving you my thoughts and opinions, and of course if it's going to be worth using for all of your evergreen webinars, which if you have any interest in them whatsoever, that's definitely going to be a big thumbs up. I will also put a link down below in case one, you'd like to follow along and two, you'd like to get a nice trial deal when it comes to using them because normally you have to pay in order to get started, but using that specific link, you can actually get a 14 day trial, which is only going to cost a dollar, which is cool. So let's get started. Allow me to run through the process about how it works. So here we are in the ever webinar section. After going to create a new webinar, you pretty much need to follow through the steps on each of these sections right here. It starts off with configuration and what you're going to want to be doing is either using an external video file or a previous webinar jam live session. This is going to be great and goes hand in hand if you use ever webinar for your automated webinars and of course webinar jam for your live ones. For the sake of this, I'm just going to be using a YouTube video. Keep in mind there are going to be some restrictions when it comes to that. Uh, they talk about that here in terms of like the pausing and the playing. Ultimately, it'll probably be best if you use something like Vimeo or Amazon AWS uh, and so on and so forth. I believe this was like a shorter video, so I'm just going to do like three minutes. This is just for demonstration purposes and walking you through like how you fill everything out. But after going through that, you want to click on confirm. From here, next is going to be the basic settings. Give me a second. I'm just going to put in some random names and examples. Right, so for this example, I put webinar for my awesome customers, how to increase your sales without increasing your traffic, all the latest tips and tricks, webinar language. Uh, you can set it if you want to keep it private or not, or if you want to put it on their on-demand section, which is a great way to get more traffic, which is free. You know, they can put it in their portal there. This is just a, an example, obviously, so I'm going to keep it private. And anytime you edit a new section, you want to click on confirm. Uh, webinar presenters I already have done, given the fact it's up, uh, everything's all set with my picture and whatnot. So I'm just going to click on next. Schedules is a great part of this. And what I really like about it is that it's very flexible. Okay. There's a lot of things you can do. So looking at the top here, you can do every or on. So for example, given the fact that it's going to be automated, I want to do every day at let's just say 12 PM looks great. And we can do for the user's own time zone, which is auto detected, or you could just go with where you are. Like say I'm in Eastern, but I really like that. So I'm going to do add. And if I want to add to that, let's say I did 12, I also want to do say maybe at 1 p.m. or 3 p.m. Give it some time in between. I can add that that way and I can go on from there and so on and so forth. Aside from that, there's a lot of cool settings you can do like enable instant watch replay. It also says important remember to also enable the replay session itself later on the configuration wizard, which it will remind you to do. So I'm going to actually click on that. You can do allow late attendance. You can enable just in time options. So it's like if they just get there, they can pretty much sign up if they want to. So if you click on that, that's going to be available every 15, 30, 45 or at the top of the hour. You can also hide the nighttime schedules when it comes to that. Keep in mind, this is going to be flexible and whatever is going to be best for you. And you might have to split test a little. There are so many options that you just want to make sure you don't overwhelm your potential visitors or attendees when it comes to it. So you can take off this if you want. You can add it. It's going to be up to you. You can even block some holidays, which they also have right here, some of the major ones, which is cool. But just for the sake of demo, yeah, I'm going to click on confirm and show you what else we can do. Now, in terms of pros and cons, uh, I think it's cool that it's very step by step like this. There's a lot of things that you have to fill out, but it's going to be worth it in the long run. And, and so to speak, like the juice is worth the squeeze. OK, let's take a look at the registration page design. There are going to be some templates that you can utilize. Now, when it comes to me and not just landing pages for webinars and anything else, simplest is always going to be the best in my opinion like i love the basic ones so what i'm going to do is i'm going to click on customize just to show you we have the registration bar you can add a few other things but i'm going to click on this keep it there and launch builder all right so here's what it looks like when it comes to editing your you know registration pages overall it's pretty simple whatever you see you're going to want to click on and just you know you can edit it this way obviously add something subtract it there's not a whole lot going on it's not the most spiffiest like editor in the world but it doesn't need to be uh, like i've talked about you have your main headline you have some bullets uh, and everything else is going to go along with when it comes to editing this beforehand so i'm not going to spend too much time on this uh, i'm not going to say it's a bad thing that there's not a lot going on i think a lot of the bells and whistles come within what you can do with ever webinar not so much in terms of like building their you know landing pages or sign up forms and so on and so forth so just a very quick walkthrough i'm going to click on save and exit you can enable split testing, which is great. I do recommend that. So once you toggle with this, you have A, obviously you can go to B. You'd probably want to pick one here and then of course change that to 50% and 50%. I'm just going to turn that off so I can continue. 
Those are some of the templates. Let's click on confirm. We have our registration form fields. This is great because we can obviously change these around. If you want the last name, if you want phone number, these are going to be mandatory like for this example. So I'm just going to keep it that way. I like keeping as few as possible. Then we also have free registration versus paid registration. Maybe you did a great training and you want to pay people to actually be able to see it. Like that's a way of doing that. That's up to you. But for the most part, they're usually free. If you want to get notified when anyone signs up for your webinar and of course, password protection, if you want that as well, let's click on next. And of course, we have more notifications when it comes to your email gateway. This talks about we have a very robust built-in mailing system to send all your webinar reminders in seconds. And best of all, it's free. That's great. You could always use your own SMTP gateway or your own autoresponder. They do have guides on this, but this one right here is overall going to be the easiest considering the fact it comes from the software. Reminder notifications as well. This is where you can actually go in, change around how you want to write your emails, what you want to add in there. It's cool because this auto inserts like the date and the time and the live link and a password if needed, you know, if you checked off that setting. There's also the ability to add in some more reminders, as you can see here, for example, add email. This is going to be where you can add and change things around when you want it to go out. Obviously, you can save that as well. Then they have post webinar follow ups. That's really going to be up to you. But remember, after you're done with each section, click on the confirm button and then you can go to the next integrations. This is going to be a popular question. I know people want to know what does EverWebinar integrate with so far when it comes to email autoresponders, they have Kartra, Aweber, ActiveCampaign, Infusionsoft, iContact, Entreport, Get Response, MailChimp, Constant Contact, Zapier, Drip, ConvertKit, and Maripost. Okay, but let's just hit confirm. And of course, third party tracking. So, like a Facebook pixel, maybe you're using like Improvely or Click Magic to track any of your leads and so on and so forth, or even your sales. That's where you can do that. Okay, let's go to next. Thank you page, default versus custom confirmation page. I'm not going to spend too much time on this. Obviously, you can use their confirmation or you can use a custom one. So, maybe you're using like ClickFunnels, maybe you're using Kartra. Uh, lead pages, whatever it's going to be made, it's going to be your website. You can send them to a specific page, as you can see right here, and they have more information in case you need to learn about that. That is the cool thing. Throughout this, they will sprinkle like articles or tidbits to help you out when it comes to get going. But overall, it's not that challenging of a process. You can add surveys if you want. So yes or no, obviously edit that around. Thank you, page design. Once again, I'm not going to go through this. This is the same exact like builder when it comes to creating your signup pages, but there's not a ton of templates, but don't let that fool you. A lot of the simple ones work great. Okay. It's going to click on confirm. We can go to live. Keep in mind when it says live, that just means like the broadcast room because it's going to be an automated webinar. Okay. So autoplay, they have the ability to enable that. And it talks about when users land on your webinar, the video will play automatically. Some browsers autoplay policy forbids the use of autoplay videos with sound. So that's something to keep in mind, or you can just disable it when it comes from that. Image and text to display when it comes to that, like click on it for start the broadcast. You can choose like a lot of options from there. Let's click on confirm to keep that countdown page design. Once again, this is going to be the countdown or page. If you want to edit that around, same thing when it comes to editing a lot of the other pages that we've gone through, we have the live room design. Once again, choosing one, selecting one. A lot of them are very similar. There's not a whole lot going on here, but it's still cool to be able to customize your live room and attendees by selecting the theme, obviously live content. All right. Like I said, I just used one of my videos for the placeholder, but if you want to add the event, this is where you can do all the cool stuff. So like a poll file sharing announcement, sticky message product offer is probably going to be the big one. Okay. This is where you can name it. You can offer the headline. You can have an image. So like when you make a pitch for a product, this is going to be the important part. Obviously the text, the button, when it happens, when it ends, you can apply urgency in your offer as it says a countdown to offer expiration will be publicly displayed upon which the offer will be taken down. So this is how you're going to do a lot of those cool events based upon, you know, when your webinar is, you know, at specific times. So that's going to be a very big aspect of that, which is pretty standard by clicking on it. You just simply add in what you need to. I'm just going to click confirm on that just so we can keep going. In my opinion, live chat box is excellent because it allows you to kind of create that feel for a live one. So if you enable live chat, there's going to be some stuff here that you're going to probably want to use. So it says allow attendees to see others chat. Sure, that's cool. And this is really an awesome one. It says save real comments for real attendees. So it says chat commenters posted by real attendees will be saved in the database. So if you wish, you may incorporate them to your simulated chat role. That's great if you really want to keep the conversation going and kind of like show what other people are asking and show the excitement about what they've seen previously in terms of the other webinars that have been presented. Let's click on confirm display number of attendees. You know, if you want to do that, there's a few options. Don't display actual number, fix the simulated number of attendees, of course, dynamic simulated number of attendees. So there's a lot of options. You know, a lot of these are 
going to really be up to you. This is where it talked about how you have to enable this, but let's go here. Let's click on yes. It says you must enable the replay session because you turn on the allow watch instant replay. So if I hadn't done that, that wouldn't be saying that, but let's just click on confirm. We have a replay page expiration date and allow users to submit questions. So that's pretty much the last step when it comes to it. Overall, it's a pretty simple process. It might take you a little bit of time, but the cool thing about it is they have a ton of features and perks that are really gonna help you when it comes to getting the most out of your evergreen webinars. It's very flexible, it's very customizable, and I think you're gonna be able to quickly see that not only by going to this demo, but checking it out yourself. So if you're looking to run evergreen webinars, definitely a software you wanna look into. Anyway, so that's about it. Like I said, I will put a unique link down below that will allow you to get a 14 day, $1 trial for every webinar so you can test them out and make sure they're going to be perfect for you. Overall, this is a fantastic option when it comes to running your evergreen webinars in terms of increasing your leads and sales and of course doing it all on autopilot. Thanks again for watching and I hope you enjoy every webinar.